Right, okay, hands and feet. Um, I've done quite a bit to the hands and feet. I don't really need to do very much more um, as I've gone along. So basically I'm going to use this this slightly... Oh, it'd help if it was on camera, wouldn't it? There. Mm, I don't really want to... Oh, I don't really want to paint it over the camera, over the body, in case of drips. Okay, right, so this, this closed fist, I'm just going to give it a little bit of a, of a going over of the brighter red on the edges. Uh, dab it off a little bit where it's too much. Ooh. And then again, cross the knuckles a little bit, not to go in any into in into the um, creases too much, and across there, across there, yep. And then maybe just a little bit. Basically, it's just making it pop. This colour, just a little bit brighter, and take away the excess. I don't think I need to do more than that really. Uh, maybe a little bit of the darker colour, the, the crimson oxide on the nails where actually I'm, I'm going to, yeah, I think that's okay. So we'll be doing the nails, we're doing the nail tips. It's not going to be easy on the on the um, closed fist but we'll be doing the nail tips next so I'm just going to leave that there and leave it to cure so the other hand which is here again um, I'm going to do the slightly brighter colour. I'm just going to start it calling it bright, not cooler. Um, a little bit over the knuckles without going into the creases too much. All, there's already a little bit in the creases. And a little bit over these knuckles and then the tips of the fingers. I'm going to do a little bit more red than the rest of the finger on both sides. This side as well. Fingertips. <laughs> and the feet, same thing. Where are we? All right, same thing. A little bit of this cherry red, I'll call it. It's not cherry red, it's crimson oxide. Just the end, end of the toes. Not a lot, just a suggestion. And this one.
Right. I actually think I'm not going to do any more. I think I'm I think I'm actually done. I think I have done as much as I need to do on him. Um I certainly don't need to uh, I've been doing the lip colour every time I've gone over him with a red so that's built up nicely. Um yeah, I'm actually very happy with him as he is. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is um, is let him cure and then we're going to seal him. So I'll see you back when I come to seal him. I'm just going to cure him now. Hello there and we're back again. Alright, I've just filled up my psycho paint pots with some more psycho paint so I'm not scraping the barrel anymore. Right, we're going to uh, seal next. It's You can seal before you do the nails and the details, or you can do the nails and the details before you seal. But I'm sealing and matting, and then I'm going to do the nail de details and uh, re-glossing one or two areas. Um, I didn't really show you the mouth and how it came out, did I? Um, So uh, we we got the little tongue, little tongues in there. Can you see it? So it's not it's not beautiful, but um, the mouth. But and there's only a small gap. I don't want to make it any bigger. I don't want to risk making it too big. Um, but when I when the baby goes out, I'll do a modified dummy that'll fit exactly into that mouth, and probably a couple of spares as well which I have showed how to do elsewhere in, in a, a video and uh, I will do probably another one. But um, yeah, people do, do seem to like to put dummies in their mouths, um, which kind of feels in a way a little bit of a shame because, you know, they're a piece of art. It's like putting, you know, it, they're a piece of art, but you know, people like dummies, so what what's... There's no problem really. Right, the feet and hands, I'm going to do those first and I'm going to cure them. Um, sort of from halfway down the forearm and halfway down the the calf. Um, that way I can make sure that they're okay for sort of like when when I do the rest of it, they can they can stand on the on oh they can stand on the um, on the book. <coughs> I'm sorry, slight, slight coughing foot there. Just easy talking <coughs> for hours on end, day after day. Right, so yeah, I'm going to do the hands and feet um, first, cure those, <coughs> and then do the. Um, And I do the rest of the body. The reason being, when I come to do the rest of the body, I can I'll be doing the front of the body first. I can the feet will then be able to sit on the on the ground. So will the hands, with minimal sort of like supporting. Right. <coughs> I guess I'm with it, woman. Right, it's like a. Reasonable amount of psycho paint. It's going to be quite a big mix because this is going over the whole body. So mix A and B <coughs> together. Now some people will add a um, a, a, a very faint colour to this, like um, a brown or a yellow. Um, I'm not doing, uh, but it's up to you if you feel that 
the body needs a different colour. Feel free to add a little bit, but I'm not doing that. I'm just going to add some um, solvent. There goes my dog again, deciding it's time for his tea. Now I'm mixing this probably a little bit thicker than I would for painting. Um, <clears throat> there we are. So I'm going to apply it with a brush. brush for now as it's a small area of your hands and feet. Important to make sure that you cover all the, the whole of the area. Um, as I say the hands I'm doing both I'm doing it and uh, going to cure it so I'll be do, doing both sides. A little cat creeping through the door as we speak. Probably to remind me it's also her tea time not just George. <clears throat> right, so I'm going to, I'm actually just going to do a little bit of a massage to make sure that I've covered everywhere and then leave it to, to settle and then I'm going to fast cure it with the, the hot air. This dog that's it's barking at the bottom of the stairs at the moment. I think I've probably told you before. He, he's he's 14. I think he'll be 15 in six months. So he's 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 getting on. And uh, when he was 13, he learned how to bark. Until then, he'd never barked ever. I don't think it never ever crossed his mind to do it. Um, but he learned how to do it when he was 13. And since then, he has been. At the time, I was like, "Oh, clever boy! Oh, he's doing a bark!" And uh, well, I I lived to regret that because every time it's tea time, or he wants to go out, or he just wants attention, he stands at the bottom of the, the stairs and and barks. Um, he can come up the stairs. He's it's a bit of an effort for him because he's got he's arthritic now. Um, so he just stands at the bottom and cries and and barks until he does my nut, at which point I just go and shout at him, usually. And then I and then I give him whatever it was that he was asking for anyway. So it's no wonder he does it, because I, I should just ignore him and not give him what he wants, and then give it to him when he's not asking for it, I suppose. But, uh, yeah. I think he's a bit long in the tooth to be retraining him now. And so am I. Alright, and on this one. There's nothing like your fingers to, to cover a, a surface. So please don't, you know, don't worry. When, when it's a clear coat or a matting coat, don't worry about using your fingers to spread it out over the, over the foot or the hand or the arm or whatever it is. Um, just, you know, just make sure it is well covered and then <clears throat> we need that to cure, just make sure there's no, no little um, hairs or anything. <clears throat> so I'm going to cure these by hand using the blower. And then once this is cured, I'll push on and do the rest of it. So then I'll do the front, the whole of the front of the baby, 
and then turn it over and do the back of the body. But the arms and the legs will have been done more or less. I should really leave this a bit longer before I start to cure it to let the uh, solvent evaporate. So, you know what? I think I'll do that. I think I'll just. I think I'll just leave it for 10 minutes while I go and feed this naughty dog of mine or dogs dogs and cats I'll go and feed the dogs and cats and then I'll uh, come back up and finish curing it and finish doing the sealing okay right okay the dogs are fed the cats are fed I've slashed my finger maybe a slight, slight exaggeration there and patched it up so I'm going to do the rest of the um, and find find the appropriate here we are brush. I'm going to do the rest of the <coughs> the ceiling on the ceiling of the butt of the baby. Um, okay, I seem to be running out of so many things at the moment, but I'm not actually losing them, but just not having them anymore. Don't worry. That will do nicely. Right, so I'm going to use this silicon that I made up earlier and um, do the rest of the front of the body and arms and legs and then I'm going to turn the body, uh, cure it and then I'm going to turn the body over and do the the back seal the seal the back I don't know whether I sealed the back up before I turned it over I think I may have done but I'm going to do it again anyway for the sake of doing things right now this seal coat basically as you're adding um, your painting it's your, as you're painting in the very very thin coats it's it's adding the silicon in a very very fine layer um, but it is it is a fine layer and um, it's fragile so what we do is we add the seal coat on the top which is a slightly thicker layer of, of not neat uh, psycho paint but you know diluted but not as diluted as you would do for your painting and we're going to make sure it covers the whole thing so it, it, it completely and completely encompasses or well, encapsulates that's a good word let's just so we have that word of the day encapsulates the body in a really good layer of, of um, psycho paint which is as I said before it's a nice tough tough finish also with the very um, soft silicones this final coat of psycho paint does do a lot of lovely things to the, to make it wrinkle and things like that because what's happening is is the the uh, silicon underneath is is more fragile is more flexible more more soft and the silicon on the top is a little bit thicker and tougher so what we get is um, almost a bag with the, the skin being much tougher so when you move the skin when you move it, the skin wrinkles up, which is really lovely. Some people say that um, mallow silicone, um, I think I've said this before in other parts of the course, some people say it's fragile, it isn't. It isn't any more fragile. When you're actually pouring it and pulling it out of the mould, it's quite fragile then, yes. But once it's painted, sealed, matted, it's no more fragile than any other silicone. In fact, sometimes it can be an advantage because um, if you go like that to um, to a harder silicon, it can rip uh, because it's not got that elast elasticity in it. So the, one of the great advantages, apart from the fact it's, it feels so wonderful, is that you of course can, um, <coughs> you can you can put the arms up like that. You can you can you can pose it in different positions, and it stays. It doesn't flip back. With a, with a raw rubbery silicone with an Ecoflex 20, you go like that, let go, and it goes whoom, back to its its original sculpted position. Mm. 
Right, I'm going to put this on a <coughs> on a stand for now. But I will move that because I don't want it to stick to the stand. It's a lovely time of the process, this, the sealing because you see all your work come together and once it's sealed you do see the colours that you've applied better because you don't get that sort of different layers and things like that it's just all encapsulated underneath one gloss layer <clears throat> obviously then you make it into a matte layer but um, it is nice when the, the baby's been sealed I'm getting more flat, more, more um, hairs than usual because I've got the uh, the fan on here. So I'm just going to pop it on here while it flashes off, while the um, solvent evaporates so as I can fast cure it. So I'll be fast curing the arms first. <clears throat> possibly the legs but it's not so much the legs actually can sit up on on the now sealed feet you don't have to do it my way you don't have to do it this way you can do it whichever you'll find your own way of doing things but I'm just showing you what I do and explaining why I do it really I don't always do it the same way so I, I as I've said before I do sometimes make things up as I go along I find new ways of doing things, I, th I do them like that for a little bit and then I'll have to find a different way. But that's the whole point of it, you, 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 know, you need to become a professional doll artist in your own right, you need to be able to create and innovate new, new ways of doing things and I hope share because that's what it's all about. It's not about one-upmanship, there's plenty of room for all of us. Plenty of room for all of us, especially with sh with silicones. I think possibly with the vinyl market, it may be slightly saturated now. Um, there's so many vinyls on out there. There's so many fake vinyls out there that people don't know what to buy, and there are so many reborn artists out there. It's not easy, but with silicon at the moment, um, if you buy a silicon from an artist and it's a lovely soft silicon like this and it's you know not not beautifully manufactured it's 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 got a few flaws in it it's it's clearly handmade there's nothing quite like that there's nothing quite like it i know some of the larger companies are bringing out manufactured ones and also there are the manufactured um fake ones coming over from china but they don't, they're not like this, they're not like this. And they would never be like this. I don't think they will ever get to this quality because it's not that easy to, to pour a really soft silicon, to mold and pour one. It's not, it's not that easy. It's, you know, you, you have, you, you, you can't do it on mass. You can't do it um, in, a, in a factory. It has to be done one at a time, I believe. Maybe I'll be proved wrong. Maybe one day I'll suddenly find that there are loads and loads of lovely soft silicones out there on the market and they're all being manufactured and I'll be out there looking for a job, as will lots of other artists. But until then, I still think that it, you go along, you, you will struggle to find the quality and the, the uniqueness of handmade silicon. Um, produced, mass produced. <clears throat> but I can understand how people don't realise and buy something that's not been made legally and don't realise make maybe make you know if if, if you buy um, a kit how do you know you know, a vinyl kit, how do actually people know whether it's whether it's right or wrong? I mean when I was doing vinyl I just bought kits from 
online shops. I, I, I don't think in those days there was this 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 amount of, of ripping off people's sculpts. I don't know if there was or not. I certainly wasn't aware of it. And I just used to buy kits and reborn them and sell them, you know. It wasn't an issue. I think if I was doing it now I'd be quite quite nervous out there of what to buy what to buy. Both in vinyl and silicon, which is why I think that if you want to buy a silicon, you're better buying it directly from the artist or from or somebody that you know is in touch with the artist. I mean, I do sell dolls to silicon reborn artists, you know, painters, and they will take orders. They will buy the blank from me and paint them and um, sell them, obviously, to their customers. They'll custom make them for their customers, which is fantastic. But um, but how do how do new people know what's right and what's wrong? You know, I don't know. Right, I've covered it with the seal coat. Um, I'm going to fast cure parts of it, probably all, most of it actually, and um, and then we will. Yeah, actually, I'll probably cure all of it before I come back, and then we'll come back and we'll mat, we'll mat him, and that will be it. Apart from the little detaily bits, like um, eyelashes, eyelash, well, obviously rooting. Um, eyelashes come under rooting if you're going to um, use rooted eyelashes. Um, <clears throat> if you're not going to root, you'll still need eyelashes on them. Uh, eyebrows, if you're going to put brows on, not all babies have visible brows. It's not absolutely necessary to do brows. Uh, I will show you a way of doing brows. Um, they are really not easy at all to do on silicon. So, uh, yeah, so I will come back and we will start the end bits. Okay. Right, I've turned him over and I'm going to do the back now. Uh, just the part, um, the, the part of the back of the head and the, and the, and the back that um, I didn't do at the front, if you know what I mean, the bit that I did previously. And, um, <clears throat> and I dry matted it, if you remember. I think I did seal it, but I'm not too sure, so I'm going to do it again. The seal coat, um, just over the, the part that that, that touches the the board so I can't do it when I come to do the matting I don't really want to have it curing touching the board when I come to mat him Right, I'm going to wait for that to flash off and then I'm, I'm going to heat cure that and then I can mat the back and then I'll turn him over once that's cured and mat the front. Okay, 